Well, right now, I imagine that there are some of you in this room are wondering why in the world I chose a narrative with Jezebel, Ahab, and Elijah for a sermon such as today. It probably seems like it doesn't fit. You may be thinking, why didn't she just go back to the Psalms and pick out one of those beautiful Psalms? Or why didn't she go to the New Testament and pick out one of the healing stories of Jesus? Well, granted, these characters are way back in the Old Testament, and they're colorful characters. In these stories, you're going to find deception, evil practices. You're going to find blood and gore. So why in the world would I have chose it? Well, it's a beautiful story about God's people rebelling against him, of his kings rebelling, and then of some prophets that did everything in their power to bring all the people back to God. But more importantly, it's a story about God sheltering us when we just feel like we have to give up. So our scripture today and a few that come right before it are going to set the stage for one of the most beautiful stories in the Bible. God loved his people then, and he's not lost his touch. He loves and cares for each and every one of us. So step back in time with me just for a moment, and let's find out what happened when Elijah hiked up his robe, tightened his sandal straps, and headed out into the wilderness. It was a great day for the prophet Elijah. He was really excited. He was going to have a showdown with all of the pagan priests of Baal. He actually invited them to come up on the top of Mount Carmel, and he said, build an altar, put your sacrifice on it, and call out to your God to burn up the sacrifice, and you all can't do anything to help ignite it. And so they did. They sang, and they danced, and they chanted, and they did it all day long. And into the evening, they were dancing and prancing and shouting to their God, and they were even slashing themselves, as was their custom, and absolutely nothing happened. And then it was Elijah's turn. He went over and built an altar, but it was actually an altar that had been there before. He took 12 stones, each one representing one of the tribes of Israel, and he built the altar up, and he said, come on, everybody, gather around me. Just to kind of make his point, he put the sacrifice on the altar, he dug a trench around it, and he had them dump water all over the sacrifice, the wood, and it even went into the trench. And then he said, come a little closer. And then he called out to God Almighty to come and show the prophets that he was indeed the only God. And here's what happened. Then the fire of the Lord fell and burned up the sacrifice, the wood, the stones, and the soil, and licked the water in the trench. When the people saw this, they fell on their faces, and they said, The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. And then he took the 450 prophets of Baal and had them killed in the valley below. Victory! He had a victory, a spiritual victory. And right then, everything felt good. I imagine he was just basking in his great success. You know, we all know what it feels like to have a victory, any kind of a victory, a job offer, a promotion, a raise, a healing, 
or maybe just a period of time when everything is calm and nothing is happening. Life is just going on as usual. There's a great sense of inner peace. I love those times in my life. Well, as you know, they never last very long. Those feelings can get interrupted by a phone call late at night. They can also get interrupted by a pink slip or a doctor's diagnosis. Or you can turn on the television and you can end up feeling really down when you see this news stories about the shooter in Las Vegas. Or there's another earthquake or there's rain. Lots of rain. Rain that pours into our homes with mud and filth and water, and it completely floods out our emotions. That's what happened to Elijah. Even prophets have really bad days. His day of joy and triumph turned into his day of absolute terror. Now, here is how that terror came to Elijah. It came by the way of a messenger, and it came from her, evil Queen Jezebel. She threatened his life. She was going to have him killed. So he did what you and I would do. We would run for our life hiked up that road, took off, and he ran straight into the desert. He had worked so hard for God. He had had spiritual victories, but the emotion of all that and the fact that he may be dead the next day made him afraid and alone and scared. He didn't want to live. He just wanted his life to end. Have you ever thought about just giving up? I suspect that all of us at some time in our life have wanted to just give up. I know I have. We get so discouraged by the events in our lives that we just want to crawl up in our beds, pull the covers over us, and the only reason we get up is to go to the restroom, get a drink, maybe eat a little food, and then we head right back to our beds or our sofa or our mental state, and we stay there for a while. If you don't go to bed, perhaps you're like two women that are in this room today that I know and love very, very much. One told me, she just sits and stares out the window and tries to make sense of what is happening. The other one said, I wake up in the middle of the night when it's quiet and I just utter prayers to God. I'm sure these women and all of us have thought, what is going on, God? How did this all happen so fast? Do you even remember me, God? What is going on? Well, this story in the Old Testament, in our Bible, is a story for each and every one of us. And there are three lessons you are going to learn when you're called to go under the broom tree. And here's the first one. Number one, Sometimes all of us are called to go into a wilderness. That was Elijah. He didn't want to go there, but he was literally running for his life. It was probably not a place of his own choosing. We, all of us, can end up in a wilderness for all kinds of reasons. We may be in a, in a wilderness because of the flood. Did you know even your pastors end up in wildernesses sometimes? Sometimes it's from exhaustion because we love you and we want to take care of you and there are lots of you. 
Sometimes pastors end up in a wilderness because somebody in their congregation decides to spread gossip without going to the pastor to see if it's even true. Some pastors give up their whole ministry because of that. Hurricane Harvey put a lot of people in a wilderness when it blew through a month ago. And even though you are thinking, well, gosh, I'm not in a wilderness uh, with rocks and nothing around me, well, we're in a wilderness where as you drive down the street, memories, things we love, our antiques, our grandchildren's pictures are all stacked up really, really high. You may know somebody or you may be living on the second floor of your flooded house. You may be living with somebody else. You may be on the street. You may be in a wilderness from something totally different, but all of us end up in a wilderness. And you know what? When we're there, when Elijah was under that broom tree, God cared for him. He provided shelter in a wilderness, in a desert. God's eyes never left him, and God's eyes will never, ever leave us. That's an interesting tree. It looks like a shrub, doesn't it? But the roots are really something spectacular. Desert travelers would dig them up, and light them, and they hold the embers for a very long time. Not only that, they keep vipers or snakes away. Desert travelers would bury the embers two inches under the sand, and the weary traveler could then recline on it. And it's kind of like an electric blanket. I doubt Elijah cared about any of the benefits of the broom tree. He was depressed. He wanted to give up on life. And he thought, I am so overwhelmed. Lord, just come and take me now. I don't know about you, but when I become overwhelmed, I head under the broom tree and I stay there for a while. Now, here's number two. As he was sleeping, An angel came and said, Elijah, wake up and eat. And there was cake and bread for Elijah. Wake up and eat. And he did. He ate and he drank, but he didn't have the energy to do anything more. So he laid back down again. The angel came back and said, Elijah, wake up, eat and drink for The journey's too difficult for you. The journey's too difficult for you. So twice the angel came and brought him food and drink. When we're in the wilderness situations, no matter what they are, God will send an angel to us to take care of us. But angels come in different ways, don't they? Your angel may come to you like our Stephen ministers who want to sit and hear your story and help you till you get on your feet again. Today, during the last hymn, they're going to move in behind the altar and they're going to stand there and they're going to invite you to come and let them pray with you. Accept it. They're offering it. Elijah accepted what the angel gave to him. Secondly, your angel may be like Dr. Ashley Sanford, one of our members who is inviting anybody, everybody that's been through any type of trauma to come up on the fifth floor today. You're going to be invited to share your experiences, and she has information for you about things you need to watch out for. Think you don't need it? Mm, I think we all need something like that when we're being offered help. Not only that, 
She's like the angel. She has free food and drink for you as you go up there and sit for a little while today. She's an angel. Come and accept it, Elijah did. Your angel may have already shown up with work boots and gloves and helped you clean out your house. Or your angel may come and support you as you walk through a journey. And that's why we have small groups, Sunday school classes, healing ministries, because we're angels for each other. You've certainly been angels for me. And I only hope that I, in some way, have been an angel for you. So let's go back and review. God is always with us in our wilderness situation. His eyes never, ever leave us. Secondly, God is going to shelter us, and he's going to send angels to meet our needs. He did that with Jesus when Jesus was in the wilderness. He did it with Jesus before he went to the cross. Third thing, did you hear me say the words, because the journey is too great for you? What do you mean? I have to come out from under the broom tree at some time? The answer is yes. There is going to be a time when God is going to call you to stand before him, and he's going to ask you to get out of your bed, take those covers off your head, because he has something new he wants you to do. He's going to call you back to active duty. Elijah didn't sign up to give up, and neither did we. We did not sign up to give up. We have work to do. And so, the angel told Elijah, go up to the mountain. It was 40 days and 40 nights, and he was physically ready to go, but he wasn't mentally ready to go. And so he hid in a cave on the mountain of God. And while he was there, there came wind, and it crushed rocks. God wasn't there. And then came an earthquake. God wasn't there. And then came fire. God wasn't there. Ah, but then came the small, still voice. And Elijah heard it. And Elijah walked outside the cave, and God said, Elijah, what are you doing in there? Well, as with any of us, here's his answer. Oh, God, I have been faithful, and I have tried to bring your headstrong people back to you, and uh, I'm the only one doing this, Lord. Did you notice? I am the only one. And right now, Jezebel's trying to kill me. I give up. And then the Lord said, Elijah, Elijah, I have good news for you. You aren't the only one. There are 7,000 people that have never bowed their knees to Baal. Not only that, Elijah, I'm going to give you a new assignment, and I'm going to bring somebody alongside of you to help you and even be your successor. Successor. You know what, friends? No matter what age, what stage we're in, God always has something new for us to do. I love this quote by Ann Robertson. Every single being who sets their foot on the mountain of God is given a task for life. It's a task that will ripple out from you to others. Waves of what you are doing spreading across the kingdom. No matter what happens with your earthly job, no matter if terrorists blow up your building or shoot you down in the street, the work you do for God lives on. You know why? Because love never ends. Your work will be carried all the way to eternity because love never ends. 
It's a great story, way back in the Old Testament. It's for each and every one of us. God knows that his faithful servants need to be restored from time to time. And he had Isaiah write, those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. After a time under the broom tree, we will be able to walk and run and soar and the weight of the world will not crush us or our spirits. So right now, eat, drink, and let your body be renewed. Accept it. It's really God's gift of time. But be aware, the silent, still voice of God is going to come to you at some time and say your name and say, what are you doing there? Get out of your bed. Throw off your covers. Come, I have a new assignment for you. God does not want us to be under the broom tree for too long. We have work to do. So today, I'm asking that you go home with the story of Elijah Ahab and Jezebel in your minds, that you remember what happened under the broom tree and hear these words from Isaiah. Fear not, I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand.